Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. I'm here with Stu, Stu Miniman, at Stu. You can tweet us. He's at Stu. I'm at D Vellante. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship production. We co come to these shows. We're at IBM Edge. We go out, we scour the, the event. We find the best guests. We, we bring all them the to theCUBE. We unpack their knowledge and serve it up to you, our audience. Andy Monshaw is here. He's the general manager of Pure Systems Group at IBM. Andy, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So, as I was saying, we last saw each other in November. I think right. you were in the job for all of uh, two and a half days. Um, yeah. You know, you are uh, in a challenging position, right? You got to herd cats, you got different divisions that you got to organize, you got different technologies, you got the channel tugging at you, you got salespeople that you got to train, and so <laughs> I knew you a little bit when you were running the storage business, right. and uh, obviously an experienced IBM executive, so I think you know, you're the right person for the job, but give us an update on uh, what you've learned, you're in now for you know, several months, what'd you learn and how have you applied it? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I was in the job for about, uh, I guess about three weeks right. when we met last time. And um, we've been really, uh, let me update you. So, first of all, I think the uh, actual offerings that we have brought to market really hit the inflection point, the requirements in the market at the right time. I would say we could have been a little bit earlier, but frankly, the market itself is starting to evolve now around these other inflection points, mobile and social and cloud and big data and all the things that we're talking about here at the conference, which is driving a level of requirements for infrastructure and applications that we really haven't seen in a long time. The, uh, but that also drives a whole set of complexity points and um, the clients themselves are now starting to see that they're locked, meaning they can't move fast enough to the new because the old is really like a boat, a boat anchor. And, and that's the market that we've entered into. So now, um, the offerings themselves are much broader really than what the market understands today. And I think that's been a, uh, a learning for me, a challenge that we have. Where, where our competitors are fairly narrow, our offering is quite broad. And so it shows like this that give us an opportunity to really uh, have the clients understand the art of the possible and the art of what's actually happening. I mean, the people that we have up on stage are a lot of who's who of large clients that are using these systems. Right. We've been in market only 10 months. We've been shipping. We, our first shipments were June of last year. We've shipped over 4,000 systems in 90 countries. We've got 180 systems, uh, excuse me, 180 managed service providers using these systems and a lot of them are repeat buyers already. So, so we're seeing that we're hitting a very specific need in the market with a very broad offering, and so far things are going really well. And a lot of proof of concepts out there too. You, I think you've, you've almost 4,000 as well in terms of your, your POC backlog. I'm calling it POC, I think you guys had a different name for it. Okay. But, uh, so that was a number that somebody shared at the, uh, at the event yesterday, so, okay. so that's good uptake. Um, now, <laughs> when we last talked, a lot of the traction, and this is not uncommon in this, in this space, a lot of the traction was coming from the cloud service providers. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, you know, based on the examples that we're seeing at this event, that started to seep through to the commercial enterprise. Oh, absolutely. So I would say, um, you know, so far we've been uh, selling the bulk of these offerings in really three basic markets. Managed service providers, because they get the time to value. And we've also packaged these systems with um, a lot of offerings content, marketing dollars on the front end to help them generate business and pay as you grow offerings on the back end so they can buy it consistent with their business model expectations. General business is the second segment that we're having a lot of success in. And the reason we're having success in general business is it's all these other attributes of mass consolidation and simplification and all of the uh, kind of basic attributes that we have with the system. And then the third place is new application spaces in large enterprise. So uh, virtual desktop, because you don't 
catch, you don't need to manage the refresh cycle across multiple silos of networking, you know, large networking organizations, and large storage organizations, and large server organizations, and even those are split. It's kind of, it's been, um, and I think all of us are having the same basic challenge in that, where the ability to bring in a new application there is a much uh, more straightforward implementation than trying to coordinate refresh cycles. Yeah, absolutely, Andy. I, what we called it is that project-based engagement, especially exactly. when you can change the, the operational model. So of course, VDI was who manages it? Is it the desktop team, the server team, mm -hmm. the storage team? Well, let's try a new model and therefore converge infrastructure is a first piece. Um, I, I talked to some of your guys on the floor showing off the different systems and they were showing me the Pure System Center website and yeah. what's really fascinating Understanding about that, as you see, there's 281 different pure flex system models that you're driving through your partners. You know, 52 on the pure application and a dozen on, on the pure data. So, well, you know, when we were at the launch, you know, we're blown away by how many ISVs were there. And the question is, how many of them are just there for support, and how many will really build off of this platform? And I, I think the numbers show that you've got a, a lot of different solutions out there. So the question I have is. Convergence a lot of times is around simplifying the environment, mm -hmm. and it's much easier if it's the same kind of building block. So with so many different configurations, you know, how, how does IBM manage that, and do you get the economies of scale and simplicity across you know, so many different solution sets? Yeah, sure, so that's a really good question. And the design point of this system is, the flex system is the building block, and the flex system is exactly what it says. It's very flexible, flexible compute, flexible networking, flexible operating systems. And that flex system building block builds into the pure flex system, so fully rack stacked cabled, and then that becomes the building block for pure app. So we get the economies because the building blocks across this are very consistent. Okay, the other question I had for you is, if we look at virtualization, it tended to take off a lot in North America. I've heard that you're growing real strong in Asia, especially in China, can you speak to that? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, a very good percent, I don't think we actually talk about it externally, but um, a really good percent of our business is uh, actualizing in the, what we call the growth market units. And um, I think, you know, if I just spent two weeks in Africa, launching Pure Africa, uh, we were in uh, uh, Nairobi and uh, Lagos and in uh, Johannesburg, and it's the same types of attributes in the marketplace where the access to lots of IT skills can be scarce, and the simplicity of this system, the integrated uh, benefits of these systems, the deployment of application benefits of these systems is really resonating in these territories. So um, we, we like to talk a lot about the hyperscale markets and what we can learn from, from them, and you kind of got to, it's been a quite a bifurcated business, right? You got the Amazons and the Googles of the world, mm -hmm. and they're automating, and they're doing their own sort of reference architectures or converged infrastructure, whatever you want to call it. And then we're starting to see that seep into the enterprise a little bit. So, um, like you said before, you've really hit the market at a good time. Um, but so, what's your angle on what's happening in that part of the world? The hyperscale, sure. you know, web mm -hmm. scale out, and, and, and to what degree will that seep in, will you grab learnings from that? Will you, is that an opportunity for you or is it just too sort of far afield? So that is a great question and downstairs uh, right now we have a couple hundred managed service providers spending time not only on the peer systems mm -hmm. but on the portfolio and here's what we've learned. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, prior to this job I ran a uh, small and medium business for IBM right. called Midmarket. Yep. And inside of that what I came to learn is the movement to cloud is happening at a rate and pace that even the market and, and analysts are not picking up yet. Uh, a lot of clients are actually using cloud services and, and wouldn't even recognize that in a conversation, but in fact their departments are all accessing true. Oh, cloud. no, we're not doing anything in cloud. <laughs> That's right. Over here, of course, there. And actually, yeah. and they don't think of it that way too. You know, uh, some of them wouldn't even say that, you know, using salesforce.com, for example, is a cloud service. Right. So they don't think that way. Right. But in fact, it is happening. And, and frankly, if I can uh, sort of go out on an edge here, uh, I believe what we're going to see in the marketplace is the second wave of the VMware effect. So we had the first wave when large enterprises started putting VMware in and virtualizing the servers, and we saw server volumes start to kind of dip. I think now what we're seeing is lots and lots, hundreds of thousands of small and medium businesses 
are now moving their infrastructure to a cloud service, which is highly virtualized. So it's going from on-site individual servers to highly virtualized servers in the back. So we're seeing this second virtualization effect. Now, we've profiled over 40,000 managed service providers. So you don't need to only look at the Googles and the Amazons. IBM has a massive cloud uh, uh, off set of offerings, but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of mid-sized managed service providers that use hundreds or hundreds of thousands or millions of servers. We're working with a, a, a customer over in France right now, a managed service provider, they have about 15 employees and a million servers. So there's the, the opportunity uh, is, is extends well, well, well beyond just a couple of large players. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and cloud is really the real deal. We're, we're entering sort of the, the next phase. It was almost like the, the first phase you know, was really started when the economy turned down. People yep. said, all right, we got to go to variable expense. And then you had the shadow IT uh, effect. Uh, and now I think IT has realized, wow, we better, we better hop on board. And you're starting to see deeper integration business integration Absolutely. and business models emerge. Um, so we were getting, if anything, you know, the big data, people are sort of, <laughs> you know, that, that's all, all the talk is, but the money's being made now, now in cloud. So my question is, where do you see that going in terms of you know, the, the, the traditional IT, flat to down budgets, mm -hmm. there's, there's you know, not a ton of investment going on, certainly not, a, not within the heavy lifting of the infrastructure. Meanwhile, cloud service providers growing like this. That's right. Um, so, does eventually the whole thing go to, to cloud? Does it, um, does it come to the point where the IT department essentially becomes these, you know, people talk about cloud brokers, but completely changes their role. Are you seeing that already and where do you see it going? Yeah, sure. Um, so going back in general business in particular, and I agree with your point 100%. The first time it was to get utility types of um, you know, moving from CapEx to OpEx and getting the OpEx to be variable. That was wave one. Wave two is, uh, I need to go to mobile, I need to get more security. Um, I'm concerned about security, that's a huge issue now mm. across almost every enterprise. And these um, capabilities are driving people to service providers that can do it at a very economical effect because of the aggregation. Will it all move to this? Probably not. I mean. The IT world is filled with everybody is going to go here and it never actually happens. And there's legitimate reasons for it not to happen. Um, but I do think we're going to, this is a trend that's just beginning. I think personally, I think we're just at the beginning of this. I think um, the, the buyers of this will be different. A lot of the budget for this is going to show up in non-traditional places in marketing budgets or in finance budgets that won't show up as IT, but it'll show up as spend. So even the world of um, people who measure this aren't going to capture the spend. That's why I say I think it's happening a lot, a, just so much faster than we're really talking about, uh, you know, on a point to point. And yeah, or that you can even count, like you said. Exactly. So, so Bernie Meyerson was on yesterday and he talked about this, this mobile first initiative and he specifically was talking about the security implications of mobile first. And I asked him, <laughs> is, is security a complete do over as a result? And he said, yes. And so that strikes me, because everybody's so concerned about cloud security, but it strikes me that cloud security ultimately is, potentially anyway, is going to be better than the vast majority of enterprises. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe the top companies out there that have the skills and have the knowledge and the resources can, can do security better, but it seems to me that the cloud service guys are ultimately going to going to win that battle for the benefit of, of particularly mid-sized customers. The, what, what the cost there? of doing security at the level is required now it's not a cost that can be borne by small medium business. It just, you know, when you think about, uh, and I had, a, uh, I had a client in a round table over in France about a year ago, and he turned to me and said, look, it has to go to cloud because the cloud provider can spend enough money to get the right availability characteristics, the right um, backup and recovery capabilities, the right security capabilities, and they can deliver me services where they can amortize the upfront investment across a lot of clients. I can't afford to do it. And he said, you, they will, or IBM, you will, we happen to be talking about an IBM uh, smart cloud, but um, you know, you can do that. You have the expertise and you've got the, the aggregation benefit. I do think that this capabilities shift 
and requirements is what's really going to drive this. I, I personally believe virtual desktop is going to take off so much faster than what people are talking about now. I mean, we've been talking about it for years. Mm -hmm. The experience is now there. And the requirements now. Because of mobile, yeah, generally, yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's the real drive. Andy, I wonder if I can poke on that because sure. you know I, I've I've looked at VDI for mm -hmm. for many years, and, and while you know there's use cases that are really valuable, we really find it it's the mobile and it's the availability of information where it needs to be at the time, rather than kind of you know VDI is kind of a just a tool in in the in the chest. So wh why do you really think VDI, which has been so many years, we've been saying yep. really now, really now, really now, is going to going to take off? Well, because but the experience itself is finally there, number one. Uh, it hasn't been there. VDI's been around, the concept's been around for 10 years. At uh, least, yeah. The experience has really, I mean, I've, I've seen uh, clients running CADM uh, applications on VDI now. I mean, that was something you couldn't do before. Now it's you know real time and, and the, ex the experience that clients <laughs> are looking for. But I think we're now hitting a point where people have to do it because the amount of information that's pushed out on so many devices is at a point where there's just phenomenal security risks. And clients are now looking at that and addressing it. And if I'm a small and medium business, or a general business even, I could never invest in an IT department that could be have the domain expertise to be able to deliver all of this, con you know, all of this um, capability. And so I, I, I see it happening. And, and oh, by the way, when you move to DD, VDI, you also get the added benefit of being able to take a lot of the kind of uh, endpoint structure that's there to support the endpoints, and you can consolidate that to the back and yield benefits to deploy people onto the things that you're looking to add value. Yeah. I, I, I guess, right, I, I've looked at it more of there's, you know, various internal systems mm -hmm. and getting it to the, you know, to, to the proper endpoint. It's not just about, you know, virtualizing that desktop and that, as I said, just kind of seems a point solution. It really needs to be an orchestration mm -hmm. across your information pieces and absolutely security is a key piece of that. Agreed. V Vidia, I, I tend to consolidate terms sometimes yeah. just for ease of communication like we talk about MSPs all the time yep. yeah. in the traditional that's a 1980s term uh, we talk about MSPs as anybody who delivers stuff as a service whether it's infrastructure communications or marketing or whatever yeah. but so in this case VDI for me is really all about all of the endpoints yeah, it, it, much and beyond kind of the Zen desktop correct. The, you know, VMware correct. you know view correct okay Okay, I like that actually, that sort of new definition of uh, VDI, just the virtual desktops in, in and of itself is a, a misnomer. So let's talk about the channel a little bit, uh, beyond the cloud service provider, because that's obviously sure. a, a channel, but so what are you seeing in the channel with regard to you know, the pure business? What's the uptake like, what's the message like? They, you know, they want increased flexibility, they want these reference architectures, yet at the same time you guys are off, you know, oftentimes pushing integrated systems. What's the discussion like there? Sure. Um, so first, let's, let's just sort of refine the definition of the channel. Um, what we have seen in the channel now for the last two or three years is there's sort of three camps. There's a next generation camp. These are folks that have moved their business model from a value added reseller of hardware to a broader business model, including service delivery, um, including new, net, what we call next generation partners, these managed service providers. Yeah, guys who are embracing the cloud, really. They, they, they either started there or have shifted yeah. there, and yes, okay. are embracing it. And, yeah. Oh, by the way, I mean, in, in less than 18 months, we brought 4,000 new MSPs to the IBM partner world, 4,000. So, you know, I would say that's an indication to me that we've got the right set of offerings and the right set of capabilities for those types of partners, and they're embracing it. They like what we have to say. You wouldn't get that kind of update, up, take. We just launched the program less than 18 months ago. You couldn't ago. force that if no. you wanted to. <laughs> no. But the second camp are the value-added resellers who, who are holding on to the value-added resell business, but also uh, moving their business model. And you know, interestingly, they'll tell me, it's a small portion of my revenue right now, but it's a large portion of my profit. And if you think about the, you know, when I was in the PC business a long time ago, we used to say you rent market share. You don't actually get market share, you rent it because it was very highly um, uh, transferable at any point in time. Uh, that's starting to happen now in the kind of more uh, commoditizing pieces of the infrastructure. You're renting market share. And frankly, 
uh, when they move to these service model, uh, service provider models, you're not only uh, have market share, you're growing it because you have a, you have a now a newly formed relationship with a client that lasts seven to ten years, not two to three years for the refresh cycle. And so, and then the third camp is the ones that are just going to ride this thing out. And um, my personal view is, over the next two, three, four years, we'll see less and less and less and less and less straight VARs. And so, so what we've done here is we've created a whole set of programs to embrace all three segments. Um, and we're seeing a lot of success. The PureFlex uh, brand is running at about 70% channel participation. Uh, should be more, I'd like it to be more. Uh, we just uh, last week announced a whole new set of uh, prepackaged bundles. We have guaranteed minimum margins for the channel that are quite rich. And the, the game changer for us is we've created partner delivered services. Because as the partners wanna move their business model they want to be able to deliver high value virtualization services, cloud services, et cetera. And so we train the partners on this and they deliver it and they can get 30, 40, 50 points of margin. Uh, IBM branded services or no, par partner, partner delivered, branded. partner okay. branded, ah, okay. IBM supported. And oh, okay. I yeah. wonder if I just dig in, if I look at sure. like uh, Cisco, what they did with their converged solutions, uh, they really took mostly network channel mm -hmm. and found companies that wanted to grow a data center channel. Sure. So uh, I'm, I'm curious what kind of pro, what's the profile of your successful uh, channel partners for the Pure System solution? Sure. So a lot of, um, so rough numbers, rough numbers, about 50% of our business is net new, roughly. So we're getting, uh, you know, one camp of partners are the ones that are moving people from traditional blade centers or traditional x86 into this and, and getting the consolidation benefits. Uh, the other ones are the, are the partners who actually see the world's moving to this converged uh, infrastructure kind of buying um, and have embraced this as new practices. Okay, and uh, last question I have for you is, what's the competitive angle here? Are you seeing kind of stacks versus stack? Is it, you know, VBlocks and Oracle, Exo whatevers and going up against yours, or are you still mostly competing against kind of build your own or all your own environments? And, okay. and, and, and give us, you know, your take as to how you're doing out there. Sure. The competitive environment and where we are very successful in the competitive environment is where the clients understand what we're talking about relative to the breadth of this offering. So if you look at our competitors, everybody's pretty single threaded. You know, two core Intel with a Cisco switch or uh, with an EMC uh, system or, uh, and by the way, VBlock, if you take a look at it, is extremely, extremely poorly designed. That's why they had to come out with VSpec. But um, from a from a uh, you know from an ability to amortize the power mechanicals and the rest of the efficiencies, you look at our system; it's extremely dense, and that's why you can get consolidation benefits of you know 500 HP servers into one chassis. I mean, that's the kind of benefits that clients are getting. Um, so when the clients understand that you can do power, I series, and Intel consolidation, when they understand that you can consolidate all of this wildly underutilized open system storage behind the virtualization controllers, which nobody else has in their offerings. When the clients understand that you can do a uh, breadth of management across the entire system and not individual management components, and like yesterday we announced the SAP HANA edition of PureFlex, and when clients understand that you can put the database on the HANA, you can put the uh, business suite on the power systems, which runs business suite better than anything else on the planet Earth, and then run some of the low value modules on Intel. You can't do that with anyone else. And so this competitive angle is really about educating the clients around the added value you can capture with a system like this. I think our competitors have basically said to clients, I just really want you to move what you're doing here over to here. And that's, you know, there's little value to that from my point of view. Excellent. All right, Andy, we're getting a hook. Really appreciate you coming by. I could, I could go on forever with you. We could talk about storage. We could talk about XIV and you know, all I'm the changes to. that are happening here. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we're out of time. So thanks very much for coming by. It was great to see you again. All right, everybody, keep it right there. We're right back with our next guest after this break. All right. Thank you.